What's up Unity developers? This is James back with another part for the 2D platform gaming tutorial with Unity. This is part 7, so if you haven't seen the first 6 parts, I highly recommend it. Today's video, we are going to make platforms move. It's a very popular thing to do in platforming games. In today's video, we're going to make code dynamically so we can apply it to any one of our platforms and we can set it so that it will either move vertically or it will move horizontally. We will also tell it how far to move and how quick it should move. We're going to set up our script so we can edit all of that stuff right here in the handy dandy inspector panel. So let's get started. We're going to go to our scripts folder, right click, create JavaScript. Okay, we're going to name this Platform Mover. Very creative name. So we're going to go to open. This is going to launch Mono Develop, which might take a minute here. All right, I'm going to zoom this in so you folks can read it. And we're going to begin. We're going to start out by declaring some private variables. Now, what private variables are are ones that you cannot see in the inspector panel, but they exist in the code. Okay, so let's start out by just saying private, meaning the uh, the inspector panel won't see them, so you don't have to fiddle around with them in the inspector. We're going to create one named XPOS. That's for exposition. Uh, oops, missed the word var. X pause, and we're going to make that a float. We're going to make another one for y, and also a, f a flout, a float, and we're going to make one more, and we're going to call that max. This one is going to be a boolean. Now, what a boolean is, is like a light switch. Think of it as a light switch that's on your wall. It's on or it's off. It only has two states. So whereas a float can be any number from 0.0, .0 all the way up to, I don't know, 10,000.7559, blah, 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 whatever. A boolean only has true or false. Okay. So moving on, let's create a few more variables. These are not private, so we're going to say var vert with a capital V. This will also be a boolean. Another var set to max amount, which will be an int. <clears throat> and var step, which will be a float. And I will tell you what these are about as we go through them in code. Um, these variables, because they are not private, will show up in the inspector panel because we want them to. We want to be able to set them in the game without having to come back to our code. Okay, we're making this code dynamic. I guess that's what they call it. At least that's what I call it. So, to start out the game, what we want to do is use this X position and Y position to store where our game is at. Okay, so if I move this aside and look at the platform. We're going to set it up so this is the starting position. Where you put it in the editor is where it's going to start. And then we're going to tell it where to go, and then it will travel back and forth. Okay, so we're going to grab our X position by saying X position is equal to, let me blow this back up, X position is equal to transform dot position dot X. And as you guessed, we can do it with the Y pause as well with transform.position.y. So now that we've got our starting point, we can go on down into the function update and begin moving our object. Now we're going to use two very large if statements to make this happen, and our max boolean. This is going to act like a switch for us. So when we start out the game, max booleans automatically are false, so max will be false. It's at its bottom point, we're moving vertically, it's at its bottom point, so the max is false, the way it should be. It's going to go up, and when it reaches its current position, its current Y position, plus the maximum amount we want it to move, then it will flip max on, and what this does is just like a light switch, it tells us that we want to go down. And then step is going to be the amount we move per frame, okay? Okay, so let's start out by saying if we're vert, are we moving vertically? This is going to be vertical movement. OK, 
okay and uh, I need to put in my curly brace here and our closing curly brace let's get some space in here so we're moving vertically we're gonna say if max this means we've reached the top actually we're gonna do not max meaning we have not reached the top yet so when the game starts it's gonna come in here and says oh are we moving vertically or horizontally if we're moving vertically have we reached the maximum amount we're allowed to move yet which we haven't so we're gonna say transform if I could type today dot position dot y because we're moving vertically plus equals step so it's gonna add the step amount to our y position every frame that we have not reached the max amount going vertically okay and we're gonna throw in an else here and another curly brace so this is what happens when we reach our max if this if this one up here this if means we haven't reached the max this else means we have okay so we've reached our maximum what do we want to do we want to go back down so what we do is we just take the position of our object our platform at Y and then we want to subtract step so if you're not familiar with the plus equal or minus equal what this basically says is the transform position plus the step and it's just a lot easier than writing out transform position dot y equals transform position dot y plus step this says add this to myself or subtract this to myself that's what the plus equal and minus equal are okay so this is what happens if we do it vertically okay and you'll notice we haven't told max to be true yet and we'll get to that later okay so this is what happens if we do it vertically now what happens if we all want to go um, horizontally so we're gonna say else and this is we are horizontal movement okay because we're not doing vertical we're doing horizontal and we're gonna say basically the exact same thing if we're not at the maximum horizontal movement we want to go through and do all of the steps to make it move so because this is the, is the same what we can actually do is copy this paste it down here but the Y position is vertical so we need to change these to X's okay and that's that's pretty much it so we actually just coded the top part and then for horizontal we just changed the Y to X <clears throat> okay so this portion of code here and I'm going to put in a comment. This is for actually moving the platform. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is to set the max. All right, so when we set the max down here, what it's going to do is tell this stuff up here whether it should or should not be moving. And in actuality, this part should probably be above the other, but we're going to code it and then move it up there, okay? So what we're going to do is say if vert, are we moving vertically? So again, this is vertical. We're going to say <clears throat> this is where we're going to check our position to tell it whether or not it's reached its maximum. We're going to say if the transform dot position dot y is greater than or equal to the y position plus our max amount we've reached the maximum okay so then we say max equals true now we're gonna see because it's gone all the way up so now max is true so it's gonna come down here and it's gonna start when the game starts it's gonna say oh the maximum isn't true yet but we are going vertically so we need to keep moving up on the Y then it's gonna reach down here and it's gonna say oh we've reached the max so max is true now and it's gonna come back through on the next update it's gonna say nope max is true so we can't do this let's do this part instead okay so we need to start moving down well, once it starts moving down it's gonna go down forever unless we tell it to 
stop and go back up. So we're going to say else if transform a position dot y is less than or equal to our original y position, meaning it's either reached the original position it was at where we set it, or it's gone a little bit past that, we want it to turn max off. Okay? And when we turn max off, it will come back up here and start going back up again. Okay? So, this is for vertical movement. So let's go ahead and take care of the horizontal max check, okay? So we're going to take this, say else, and just like above, because all of the x stuff is the same as the y, we can actually copy all of this code and paste it down here, and then we're just going to change these y's to x's. It's important that you remember to also change the y pause. If you don't feel like typing all this script out, don't worry. Um, there'll be a link in the description of the video where you can go to the blog and copy and paste all of this. Okay, so now that we've got our X and our Y all set up, we can copy all of this code for the set max. Press Control X, move up here, give it some space, and paste it back in. Okay, so what it's going to first do is come in, it's going to check our position. If it hasn't reached the maximum amount yet, or if it has reached the maximum amount, it's going to set max to true. If it hasn't, max will stay as false, because it starts out as false. Okay? And this is for vertical, this is for horizontal. Okay? So let's put a note in here. Horizontal. And when we come down to this portion, Let's just focus on vertical for now because horizontal is exactly the same. So if we are going vertically, we haven't reached the max, so max is false by default. We're going to come down here and we say, oh, max has not been reached yet. That's what the, the little exclamation point means. Not. We have not reached max. So we want to go up. So it's going to go through in every, every frame. It's going to keep going up until finally the actual platform is at its max. Okay, and then it's going to say, oh, we've reached our max. Max is true. So then it's going to jump down here and say, oh, have we reached our max yet? Yes, we have. So we need to come down to the else. And then what we're going to do is start moving downward. And then we go back to the next frame. And it's going to keep going down until it reaches its original position, its original Y position then it's going to turn max off again. So you can think of it like a light switch in your house. If it took a really long time for your lights to turn on, so you flick the switch, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then the light bulb finally turns on, and then the light switch flicks off again. That's basically what we're doing to move it back and forth. But I'll just go ahead and save this. Go back to the Unity Editor, let it finish compiling, and make sure that there are no errors. Uh, this error warning here comes from the third person controller we're not using, so we can just clear that out. Okay, so now we have our platform mover inside of our scripts folder. Right here. Let's go ahead and grab one of our platforms. This top right one here, or if you only have one, it's just any platform will do. And we drag this script onto it. So now we will never have to come back into the code because we've made this so that it works in the editor and we don't have to adjust the code at all. So do we want to move vertical or not? Well, I think I do. I want to make the maximum amount of movement five units vertically. And I want it to step 0 0.05 every frame. So if I start the game here, we should see it move up, reach its max, and come back down. Now the great part about putting all of this stuff in the editor rather than putting hard numbers directly in here into the code is that we can adjust this. Let's say I only want it to move two. Okay? Or let's say I want to make this step really, really fast. Alright? Or all of a sudden I want it to go horizontal. And back to vertical. And because we can actually access this script from other scripts, 
let's say the player lands on the platform when it's moving up and down and now all of a sudden I want it to move horizontally just because he landed on it we can do that because we've added all of this code in okay so if we take this platform we set it to vertical uh, max amount of seven and I like that step let's go to the next platform put the script on it and let's say I want this platform well this platform I don't want it to do anything so I just leave it at zero and if I play it just stays where it is okay so let's go to the last platform the one on the bottom and this one I want to move horizontally so I'll leave the vertical off set the mount to 10 okay and then the step to 0 0.05 just like the other so everything moves at the same time now this is gonna move on the X now so you need to pay attention to where your X is It's 3.2 something something it's gonna go vertically which means it's gonna move this way so 10 units would be 13 so when it stops it should be all the way out here and it's gonna be just about off the screen so let's set this back to 3.2 and we'll move it over here so even if X is negative it's still gonna work okay so let's play the game now and you'll see one of our platforms moves up and the other one moves left and right and I can actually stand on these and my player goes off the screen which is screen limits or camera movement that's for a different tutorial but getting back to the moving platforms um, the thing we need to keep in mind I know there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind is that the player can step on these for one reason if you have built yourself your own 2D controller rather than using the first person like we have there's a part of the first person controller called moving platforms that's enabled okay if we turn that off I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not I haven't tested it you see how the player stays there he doesn't move with the platform and then falls off so if you want your game to do that let's say it's a conveyor belt or whatever and you want your player to just jump up on there and oh, screw that up there we go and stay in position and then fall off that that can be an added challenge to your 2d game where players have to like fight to stay on the platform okay now this one will keep him on it because it's actually pushing him up but horizontal movement, you can see, oh, he fell through. See, so there's some bugs in that. So by using the first person controller, which we did way back in video one, we can actually enable moving platforms. And this will allow us to jump up on this and stay with it wherever it goes. Okay, so that's just an added value to using the first person controller as a 2D controller, okay? so if you want that difficulty in your game you can shut that off right here in the moving platform I recommend leaving it on though so in today's tutorial we made a platform moving script which is awesome I will post that on the blog with a link in the description so you folks don't have to code all this junk you can go and copy and paste it it's my gift to you um, what else did we do I think that was pretty much it so just covering the moving platforms today in the next video tutorial we're gonna make the map a little bit bigger and we're gonna cover camera movement on the player thanks for watching mm -hmm.